Hey guys, Josh here and welcome back to another Story of Seasons Pioneers of Olive Town video. So the Japanese version of the game released about over a week ago and I've been playing every day since and you guys have been asking me so 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 many questions about the game. So I decided to make a community post a few days ago asking you to send me all of your questions about the game and in this video I'll be answering these questions. So let's just start. So the first question comes from Tired Otter, who's asking if you remember how long did it take you to start upgrading your tools in game. I love the farming aspect, but I know time flies by in this game and I would love to devote some extra time to befriending townsfolk. Thank you for sharing your gameplay with us, I can't wait to get started. Well, I can't wait till you guys can get started as well. The game comes out on March 23rd in North America and 26th in Europe. It's coming soon guys, it's coming soon. But yeah, so I'll start with the tools question. So whenever I play a Story of Seasons game, I always try to upgrade my tools as quickly as possible. And I think it's even more important in Pioneers of Olive Town, because since we now have a crafting, you'll need to gather a lot of materials. You'll have to cut so many trees, smash so many rocks. So there's really a lot to do with your tools. So yeah, it's really important to focus on that. And I think probably by the 15th of spring, I had all of my tools upgraded from wooden to iron. And by the beginning of summer, I had all of my tools to silver. And I think when you get them to silver is when things start getting easier. So yeah, I would say if you play, maybe try to upgrade your tools to silver as quickly as you can. And we'll talk about befriending townsfolk a little bit later in this video. So for the second question, Caitlyn is asking, is making money easy? I know earlier Story of Seasons games had an option for easy hard. Well, actually, yes, you do have the choice. So if you pick the easy mode at the beginning of the game, I think in English it's called seedling mode, if I'm not wrong. But basically you'll make more money by selling things. Everything in the store will be cheaper as well. Your friendships will go up faster. Your skill experience will go up faster as well. And your stamina will decrease slower. But in my case, I've only been playing on normal mode, so I can't speak exactly how the difference feels. But yes, there is an easy mode available for you if you'd like. Alright, so the next question has been asked by so many people. You guys really wanted to know about the pacing and time management of the game. How much time do you have in a day? Do you have time to meet villagers? Is it more focused on the farm? And before I answer this question, I just want to say that for myself, when I play a farming simulation, usually I focus more on the farm and making money than meeting villagers and building relationships. So I'm just gonna answer this from my point of view. But so far I've been feeling like there's so much to do, especially if you compare to Friends of Mineral Town. So I almost finished my first year right now. I'm in midwinter and every day since I started, I've been going to bed between like 11 p.m. and 2 a.m. And I feel like my days are crammed <laughs> with things to do but in a very good way. I feel like the days are quite long, but there's just so much to do that you're, you're trying to fill as many things as possible in one day. But you know what? I really like it. And in Olive Town, not only do you have to take care of your crops, your animals as usual, and also just maintaining your farm is a lot of work because you'll have new rocks and trees and weeds that are gonna spawn on your farm every day. So you have to maintain your farm, you have to clean it, and you can also customize everything so you can change the layout of things, you can move your buildings around, you can decorate, make it pretty. Also, you have to spend time on your makers to transform your materials. So there really is a lot to do in a day, definitely on your farm. But I really like keeping myself busy like that. So I remember when I was playing Friends of Mineral Town, I used to always go to bed at like 6 p.m. because I didn't have anything else to do in my day. But now there's just so much to do. So on the other hand, the problem is that I don't have time to meet villagers because I just work so much on my farm. So all of my relationships are kind of <laughs> struggling right now. I don't know the villagers too much. I don't meet them too much. But that's because I really want to focus on building a nice farm. And I'm thinking that in my second year, I'll have more time to focus on my villagers. And if that's one thing you really like about farming sims is to build relationships. I'm sure you can take less time than me to work on your farm and just spend more time with the villagers. And I think you'll be happy with that. So yeah. And also one other thing to keep in mind is that the time passes indoors. So if you go mining, time will continue to pass. If you're in your house or in a barn or in a store, time will pass as well. So that's one thing that really adds to the fact that time goes by so quickly in this game. 
it is quite fast paced. Next question, Siren Blazer is asking, how is the house customization so far? I remember in one of your streams you were able to pick up a table but could only place it in one corner so I was wondering if the other objects are like that too. Thanks for all these videos, I'm loving all the content. Thank you so much for the sweet comment. And to answer your questions, the house customization is not so good to be honest, especially after playing Animal Crossing New Horizons if you guys have played. You know, you can customize your house however you want. And also in previous games, like I think in Harvest Moon Magical Melody, you could move your furniture anywhere in your house. But unfortunately in this one, it is very restrictive. I'll put it on the screen right now, but in your first log house, when you upgrade from the tent to the house, uh, you can <laughs> just, you just have four squares and a little counter to put things. And when you upgrade it later, you have a little bit more space but it is still very very restrictive and you can't move other furniture around and you also cannot change the wallpaper or the floor but from what i've heard when you upgrade your house more you get a second floor that's more customizable so i'm looking forward to that but if you were really looking forward to customizing your house in this game just don't set your expectations too high because there's really not much you can customize in the house unfortunately Miyashi23 is asking, can we rotate buildings? You can move most buildings, except your house you cannot move, but everything else you can. Unfortunately, you cannot rotate them. All of the items you cannot rotate. Well, except the fences. The fences will rotate depending on where you place them, but everything else will just be straight. But yeah. For the next questions, Bacon Sucks is asking, is there a side story or just farming? So that's a very good question because usually in Story of Seasons there's not too much story and I have to say this one is not very story focused but there is a story and there is a kind of main quest if you want which is to revive Olive Town. So every few days Victor the mayor will come to your place and he will ask you to help him with some project to revive the town to build a new shop or to change the benches or to change the streets or to add this and that so as you play you'll see the town evolve and you will attract more tourists so that's kind of the story just reviving the town and attracting as many tourists as you can and for that you'll have to gather some materials and give them to Victor but yeah it's a very simple story but I think it's pretty good next Cynthia is asking who is the wild girl and actually I'm not gonna tell you I don't want to spoil the story and there's not too many surprises or like interesting things happening in the story so I'm gonna leave it to you guys to discover this when you start playing the game. Next Tabesen is asking how good is the performance of this game like loading time or FPS? I remember that my time at Porsche on the Switch took ages to load but gladly didn't have any major frame rate drops. So before playing this game when I was looking at the trailers and everything I was kind of scared about the performance because it looked like there was a lot of frame rate drop. And it does happen sometimes, especially like during the festivals, if there's lots of villagers. Or I think if you have too many things on your farm, it will happen as well. But for me personally, like even though I've seen it a few times, it did not impact the way I'm enjoying the game. I still like the game very much and it doesn't matter too much to me. And as for the loading time, if you go in and out of a building or like if you go in your barn or in a store, it's not too too bad. It only takes a few seconds. But the big deal is when you go from your farm to the town area and vice versa. This takes quite a while. I'll put it on the screen right now so you guys can judge by yourself. And I don't know if you have more stuff on your farm later on if it will take longer. And for this reason I try to avoid doing too much back and forth between the town and the farm. So if I need to go shopping I'll try to buy everything at once so I don't have to go to town too 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 often. Next, Jaylene is asking, people are already saying the villager dialogues are lackluster, do you think that's fair? Does the lag bother you? So we've answered the lag question, so let's talk about the dialogues. So as I said a little bit earlier, I'm focusing on my farm a lot, so I didn't get the chance to speak to my villagers too much. But there is one thing I noticed, is that three days before an event, three days after an event, everybody will just talk about the event. Also, if you build something in the town, for example, if you renovate the benches, next time you talk to each person, they will all talk about the benches. So on one hand, I really like that they are talking about what's happening in town. But on the other hand, it feels very bland and generic because they're all talking about it. And as for the other regular dialogues, I feel like they're on par with other Story of Season games. 
And right now I'm still early, so they don't know me too well, so maybe that's why the dialogues are a bit bland at the beginning. But one thing I've noticed is that there are lots of events, like little cutscenes with uh, different villagers, even if it's not marriage candidates, like just the regular villagers, there will be lots of little cutscenes. And I feel like in those, you can really get to know each villagers and you get to know more about their personalities. And I feel like most of the little cutscenes I've seen are quite fun and interesting. So, you know what? I'm not too, too mad about the dialogues. Also, for the next question, we've got Aliana who's asking, how do you feel about the character dialogue? So we've talked about that. Does it make up for the lack of character portraits or does it just feel flat blend to you? So I just wanted to address their character portraits. I do feel like it would really be a plus to have them and I hope maybe someday they can add them in an update. So during the cutscenes, I think it's all fine because you can get a close up of the characters and you see them in all their glory. They look good, they look beautiful, everything is good. But when you just like walk around and talk to the villagers, the way the camera is set up from the top, you don't really see their face, you don't see their expressions or anything, so it feels kind of bland in that way. Whereas if you compare it to other Story of Seasons or Harvest Moon games that didn't have portraits like Animal Parade or A Wonderful Life, the camera was behind your character so you could see like very clearly who you were talking to. But in this one I feel like this is not necessarily the case. So I really wish they would have portraits or even if it was not 2D portraits, like just having like the 3D characters more close up or something would be better. So this is one thing I feel like portraits would really really make the characters more expressive and the dialogues more interesting as well. Crystal is asking what do you think of the marriage candidates and which one you plan on pairing your avatar with in the future or are you going to be waiting until some of the DLC starts to come out? That's a very good question. Actually, I haven't been thinking about it too much. As I said, I didn't talk to too much with the villagers but so far if I had to narrow it down to my favorite bachelorette, it would be Blair. I think she's very cute. And if I would choose one bachelor, I think it would be Iori. I think his character is very interesting. So these would be my two favorite. And by the way, the same gender marriage is available in this game, which is good. And I also cannot wait for the new characters that will come in the DLC. So actually, I might wait for them. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you guys should help me decide who I'm going to marry. And also, I'm very curious to see where the new characters will live because the town is very small and except for a few vacant rooms in the hotel, there's really not too much space for new people. Next, Internet Cannibal is asking, what is the fishing and pet systems like in this game? Can you catch a large variety of fish like in Stardew Valley? And can you play with all your pets or just the dogs? How many unlockable pets are there? And also Lucy is asking, can you play a fetch with your pets in the trailer that was shown? So. Let's start with the fishing system. So it is kind of similar to what we had in Stardew Valley, but a lot easier. And how it works is that when the little bar is blue or green, you have to hold Y. And if it's red, you have to make sure you don't hold it. And yeah, <laughs> when you hold it, the fish will go up and you have to make the fish go up at the top before the other bar goes down. But anyway, it takes some time getting used to at first, but after that, it's so easy. It's actually super, super easy, but it's kind of fun. I think it's more fun than in Mineral Town. And also there is so many different fish that you can get. So if you fish in different seasons, different time of the day, different places, you're going to get different fish. So I think that's very interesting. And you then have to bring your different fish to the museum, kind of like in Animal Crossing. So you know what, I really enjoy the fishing in this game and you can play with your pets. So there are two types of pets, there are dogs and cats and they can do the same thing. So you can pet them, you can take them for a walk and they will follow you around. You can give them treats and you can throw them the ball. So there is a red ball for the dogs and there's a mouse ball for the cats and you just throw it and they pick it up and then your ball disappears and you have to buy another ball. So <laughs> I don't know why <laughs> your ball disappears every time. So it's not like in Mineral Town where you could just like throw the ball and like so many times you have to buy a new one every time for some reason. But anyway, it's still fun. It's still cute. And how many unlockable pets are there? There are four unlockable pets. Well, actually, there's one unlockable pet, which is the mini wolf. And then there are three unlockable mounts like rideable pets. 
you have the unicorn, you have a cool horse, and you have the wolf. All right, so for the next question, Kelvin is asking, I love raising animals in farming games. Was just wondering what animals are in the game. Also, what new features got you most excited in the game? Thanks for the videos, by the way. They are really fun to watch. Thank you so much, Kelvin, for watching. So I was really surprised, actually. There are lots of animals in the game. I'll just go on the top of my head, but... So you've got cows, you've got brown cows, you've got buffalo, sheep, Suffolk sheep, alpaca, chicken, silk chicken, rabbit, gray rabbit, goat, brown goats, and I'm probably missing a few or like a few different colors, but there are really lots of animals, which is really good. I think the goat is the first in the story of seasons, which is nice to see. I wish we had something special like a, like the pig that we had in Magical Melody, but there's none of that. But anyway, there are so many different animals and you can have up to 10 barns on your farm and up to 10 chicken coops. So if you want to have 100 chickens, you can do that. If you want to have 100 goats, you can do that. It's really up to you to like, <laughs> you can have so, so, so many animals. And I would say I think the feature I like the most in this game is how you can level up your skills. So usually in Story of Season, everything just depends on your tools and like when you upgrade your tools, they get better. But in this one, you actually just level up by using your tools a lot. And when you do that, you get better at what at the specific task you're doing. And you will also unlock like new features and unlock new recipes. For example, if you want to breed animals, you need to be at least level five in your animal caretaking skills. And if you want to craft a certain thing, for example, if you want to craft a cage for fishing, you have to be, I think, level four or three in fishing. There are lots of different skills that you can level up and it will change your experience and you'll like just unlock new features as you play. So I think that is really fun. And the last question comes from K Ariel, who's asking, I saw that they posted in Japanese that they plan to make improvements based on players' feedback so far, including the makers and dialogue. I find that I find that really promising. They're taking into consideration what the players are saying, what are some of the things you want to see them add or improve upon these updates. So first of all, I think that's a really, really good news. I saw the blog post from the producer and basically he was saying that he's taking all of the complaints that the people had so far with the game very seriously and they're considering improving things by releasing some free updates. And I think the next one is actually planned for mid-March. So it should be coming quite soon and and before the international release, which is great news for everybody. So I can't wait to see that. I'm hoping, of course, if they can improve just the performance of the game would be great. And also the portraits, as I mentioned earlier. And for the makers, what I would really like is just like a shed or a building to be able to place all of your makers in there. Because I really want to make my farm aesthetically pleasing. I want to make a beautiful farm, but these makers, they, they just take so much space and you can't put any paths or anything under so I don't know I feel like the makers just look very ugly and kind of ruin the appearance of your farm so if we had like a shed or just like some building to place all the makers I think would be amazing so yeah I'm really really looking forward to the next updates all right guys so I think I've answered all of the questions thank you so so much for asking these if you have any more questions about the game leave them in the comments below and I will take a look maybe I'll make a second video like this but yeah, if you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like and subscribe for more Story of Seasons content like this. And thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.